In this tutorial, I'm going to tell you how to use tools within the David bioinformatics resource to perform gene ontology enrichment analysis and pathway mapping on a list of genes that might have been generated from your experiment. The tool we're going to use is the functional annotation tool. So if I click on that, you then get a chance to upload your list of genes. So you can upload from a file or you can copy paste a list of gene IDs into the box. You then need to tell the software the format of your ID, so mine are ensemble IDs, and then you also need to tell it whether this is the list of your genes, your differentially expressed genes, or whether this is a background control list. So mine are the list of differentially expressed genes for my experiment. Then you click Submit List. Once your data has been uploaded, you should see a page that looks a bit like this. We've got several different categories um, and each one has a little cross beside it. So we're going to look at the gene ontology first. So if we click the cross, these are all the different gene ontology searches that have been performed. So within gene ontology, the uh, abbreviation BP stands for biological process, CC stands for cellular compartment, and MF is molecular function. So these different categories will tell you different things about your genes. And then next to BP, we have one through five. So one refers to the broader categories. And as you go through to five, it, they're getting more and more specific. So to look at the data that's been generated, we can click on this button chart. So we'll start with the BP one, biological process one. I'll just expand that up so you can see it. So here we have a list of the go terms that are significantly enriched in the list of genes that you uploaded. You can see that because we're at BP1, these are very broad terms. So we've got multicellular organismal process, developmental process signaling. So these are very broad terms, which you may find are not specific enough to be helpful for the question that you're asking. If we go back and click on, for example, the most specific BP5, so now you can see we've got much more specific categories, nervous system development, neurogenesis, organ development. BP all includes all of those terms and you get a mix of the really broad ones and very specific ones. And the one that I find gives the most useful data is the BP direct. And this contains Go terms that have been directly annotated by their database. And it's these direct ones which are ticked by default within the Go to, within the David tool. So let's click on a chart for the BP Direct and we'll have a look at a bit more detail about what this data is showing us. So first of all, we'll start at the right hand side. So we have some uh, p-value um, and uh, essentially adjusted p-value. So this is telling you that this uh, gene ontology term is highly enriched in your list of genes. And the, this list of, of Go terms is organized in uh, decreasing level of significance. So by the time you get down to the bottom, um, these go terms are less highly enriched. If we click on this RT, that refers to related terms. So it is telling you other sorts of terms and pathways which are related to that go term. If we click on the bar called genes, this gives us a list of all the genes that were in your list, which fall into that go term category. So we can click on the gene name and it tells us a bit about it, where it's found. Uh, it tells us what species it's from and RG tells us uh, other genes that are related to that one. So as I said, this was the biological process gene ontology. So you can go and look at 
the cellular component and see what that's pulled up. So this is telling us generally where those genes are found within the cell. So here we have plasma membrane, highly enriched, um, other terms related to plasma membrane. And then we can look at molecular function and this tells us slightly different things, what those genes might be doing inside the cell. So they might be binding calcium ions or binding wind proteins or binding heparin. So you can see the different sorts of GO terms are telling us different information. I'm going to close that out and just show you the other sorts of categories that they've got. So we have uh, terms linked to disease from the OMIN database. So we've just got two that uh, seem to be enriched here. We have some functional categories, so keywords, which are upregulated, which you might find helpful. And then we have other things you might find useful for your question, like cytogenetics or relationship to the literature, protein domains. Um, but one particular useful one I find is pathways. So we have various different pathways in here. Uh, BBID and BioCarta Bio -Carta seem to be smaller. Then we have KEG and REACTOME. So REACTOME within the David tool, I find less helpful because it doesn't tell you immediately what the pathway is that has been enriched. You can click on the link that takes you to the REACTOME website and then that will tell you a bit about that pathway. Uh, but that's a bit more long-winded. So I find that the KEG pathways are more useful. So if you click on the KEG pathway, so now you can see which pathways are enriched in your list of differentially expressed genes. And here it's useful if you click on that name, we now have a diagram of that KEG pathway and each of the genes in your list has been annotated with a red star. Now, if we scroll down here, uh, here we can see all the genes in the pathway that it's drawn and the ones in red are the ones that were in your list of genes. There's a slight wrinkle with these diagrams in that the little red stars are slightly displaced from the genes. So you need to imagine the red star is moved down and to the right a little bit. So this one belongs with Netrin G1, this one belongs with Netrin 3. You can download a picture of this pathway by right clicking and going copy image, but that won't include the red stars. That will just include the pathway. So then you will have to then go and manually annotate your image within PowerPoint or whatever uh, program you like to use to indicate the genes that have been enriched. Now with any gene ontology, you get a lot of information. If we go back to, for example, this one, the BP Direct, which for my experiment is telling me lots of useful things that I've got things to do with axon guidance and nervous system and wind signaling, but there's a lot of terms and it can be quite hard to put those together or to come up with a sort of coherent idea of what's happening inside your cells. So one really useful thing that David has is down the bottom of this and it's called functional annotation clustering. And what that is going to do is going to take all the terms that have been enriched in these blocks above and cluster them. Now, I find it helpful if I only run that tool with the three go term direct categories. So I prefer to click off all of the others because I find that that confuses the overall story and makes it a bit harder to to see what's going on. So I would tend to unclick all of these. And so you can see next to no, no category selected. So I've just got these three. And then I click on functional annotation clustering. And what that does is it looks at those enriched go terms in those categories that I clicked and says, well, which of those have things in common with each other. How can we cluster those go terms to make them a bit more easy to understand and see what's going on? 
And so here we have 49 clusters um, and the first cluster contains these four uh, categories of extracellular matrix structural constituent, things to do with collagen and the ER. And what's really nice is the diagram. So if you click on this little green and black box, sometimes this doesn't work and you have to reload it, but essentially it's giving you a cluster diagram and each row um, is a different gene from your list and each column is one of those four different uh, Go terms. And so the green indicates so, for example, if we look at this bottom one, collagen type for alpha-3 chain, uh, each of these four Go terms is associated with that gene. Whereas this one at the top, the C1Q and tumor necrosis factor related protein 2, is associated with one of those Go terms. So you can quickly get an idea of which genes are related to each other because they share Go terms. If we click on G here, that now gives us a list of all the 37 genes that were in that cluster. RT is related terms. So this is all the other things that are related to those particular terms. So extracellular matrix um, is most highly enriched and you see other ones that are related to it. And this gives us a link, a list of genes that fell into that particular Go category. So you can see that this clustering of the annotations can start to give you a much clearer idea of what's going on. Um, so here we have things to do with the matrix, here we have things to do with wind signaling. Um, this looks like it's got links to phosphatidyl inositol signaling, for example. So you can start to get a better idea of what's happening inside your cell and so can start to think about how to pursue those further. I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. Do us a favour in return and click the like button and leave a comment below to let us know what you liked or what else you would like us to cover in the future. We have lots of other tutorials, lectures and interesting videos, so do browse our channel page and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.